Okay, so this video is going to help us explain pain in brief. So then that way we can get a better understanding of what's going on in our bodies and our heads. So then that way we can take control of our pain recovery process. Now, to clarify, pain is an experience. It's something that not everyone can see, but often it's something that you can feel unless you're actually experiencing it, like uh, you know, getting hit by a car or a post-surgical injury. Oftentimes the pain that we're experiencing is visualized within our head and not too many people can actually see the pain that you're going through, which is why it's so important for you to actually share as much information as possible of your pain journey to your provider so we can get a better understanding of how to help you. So let's talk about the three specific types of pain uh, kind of at surface level. Number one is going to be localized pain. And that's when we're actually say stubbing our toe or tweak our back, we sprain our ankle. There's an actual specific injury in that area that results in inflammation. And that inflammation actually sends a signal to our brain to say protection and healing. And that's what we're gonna talk a little bit more about today. The other mechanism is what we call referred pain and referred pain, what that means is the fact that many of our organs actually share a lot of the same nerve roots that exit our spine. And for example, say if you have kidney dysfunction or kidney disease, you might have unrelenting back pain that doesn't get addressed via mechanical options, via movement. And that would actually require a little bit more of a deeper study into how you're feeling. And then the third piece is what we call central pain. And that's where the signals travel from one specific body part and travels into what we call the somatosensory cortex. And the somatosensory cortex is actually where all the information gets processed. And that's where our brain actually determines whether or not that electrical signal is painful or not. And oftentimes, one and three are closely associated, especially when you're dealing with pain for a longer period of time. And that's where in some cases people transition into what is called the chronic stage of pain. Now, chronic pain is going to be really more a designation of the length of time of you experiencing this pain, but it doesn't always necessarily dictate the prognosis or the level of recovery or how fast you'll recover from your painful issues. So let's take a deep dive and talk about specifically localized pain and, uh, and centralized pain. So here we have Bob. And Bob is kind of walking one day and he sprains his back. Ouch, he sprains his back because he bends over and he is not feeling good. Now, what ends up happening is that Bob is going through an inflammatory process because right now he just injured a specific tissue. And because there's going to be a lot of inflammation, the inflammation is going to be used for two things. It's going to be used to protect the joint and tissue, but also the second part is going to be focusing on healing. A lot of people demonize inflammation because they think that it's really, really bad, but we do need to experience some inflammation to facilitate healing so we feel a lot better. But in addition to that, in addition to inflammation and healing, we are sending signals to our brain, which tells us to stop moving or change our movement. So then that way we ensure that we're not causing further damage. Again, pain is going to be an experience and ultimately pain is going to be used to protect us to ensure that we are not doing a specific activity. Now, during the first 72 hours, there's gonna be a lot of inflammation. We're looking at protection. We're looking at gentle movement. We're focusing on deep breathing, down-regulating this nervous system because everything is on high alert. Everything is really scary. Everything is, in fact, painful. And so what's gonna be very important for throughout this entire journey is to ensure that we understand that the body does heal and inflammation is okay, but having too much inflammation for too long can be a little irritating. And so we transition, Bob... Uh, hurts his back, but then a few days later, you're starting to feel better because the inflammation is starting to go down, the tissues are starting to heal. But what happens if the pain lingers on for a longer period of time? So let's just say we get to the six week mark. When we get to the six week mark to the 12 week mark, we we call it the subacute phase. In the subacute phase, we're looking at a little less inflammation, we're looking at a little bit more tissue healing. But in some cases, you might be experiencing pain in this phase because your brain is so used to protecting your body to ensure that you're not creating any sort of issue. Unfortunately, when we go past, when we move outside the healing window, which typical healing tissues usually last around six to eight weeks, 
Um, usually around the six to eight week mark, we're probably experiencing less pain, but still experiencing those shudders. The, um, I like to call it the PTSD, the things that we know or are afraid of doing. So there's a little bit of fear in that as well. And as a result, that is often produced by our brain. And say, for example, we transition to what we call the 12 week point, which is what we call the chronic stage in pain. Now, I've communicated with a couple of my clients and they were really fearful because I thought that if they're in the chronic stage of pain, that they're going to deal with this pain forever and that it's never going to go away. And the reality is that that can't be farther from the truth. What ends up happening is that one, yes, the brain does get used to experiencing pain, but I often find that people are in this, this, the 12 weeks plus because they haven't quite moved in a way that doesn't set off the scary alarms that cause the pain in the first place. And so I want to assure you that if you've been experiencing pain for six weeks or more, that it's not that you're not damaging your body and it's not that the pain is just in your head, but I am fairly confident that when you're dealing with pain for so long period of time, we have to look at how you're moving to ensure that we minimize those triggers. Because what ends up happening is I want you to think about when you're healing from an injury, you're kind of, um, you're, you're dealing with the scab, okay? So say for example, like here I have, I cut my skin and here's a scab right here. Now over a span of time, that is going to actually heal. There's going to be more blood vessels, that scab is going to start to heal, that scab is actually going to come on top and it will eventually flake off. However, say for example, if you consistently pick at that scab, you don't give that scab an opportunity to heal and you will delay healing. And that's what we're trying to focus on when it comes to pain management, is trying to focus on minimizing those triggers so then that way your body continues to heal and goes back to normal. Uh, another way to think about it is I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I like to call the line graph of the pain threshold. So we'll just say this axis is a level of stress and this is going to be the period of time. And this dotted line right here is what we're going to call our pain threshold. Now on an everyday basis, we should be operating below the pain threshold, okay? This is going to be a fluctuation in stresses. However, if we do say bend forward too many times, that amount of stress starts to accumulate. And eventually once we cross that threshold, that's when alarms go off and then that's when we start to experience pain. But what's really interesting is that the moment that you cross that threshold, you actually lower the threshold so that normal day-to-day -day activities are in fact painful. And so what we need to do is we need to focus on increasing that pain threshold while operating under the pain threshold. And then as the threshold starts to go up, we can start adding more and more stresses, making sure that we don't cross this line. And so for folks dealing with chronic pain, we're dealing with a couple things specifically. Number one, your brain is in a habit of experience in this pain. It's just so used to it now, right? But also number two, we have to look at our behaviors and we have to identify what are those triggers? What are those activities that we know cause our pain? Could it be a push up? Could it be squeezing your butt too hard? Could it be sitting for too long? And identifying what those behaviors are, but then also identifying what are our limits? How much can you handle? Are you able to handle sitting for 10 minutes before your pain comes on? What that tells us is that if you know that you can sit for 10 minutes and the pain comes on, I'm gonna recommend you do something just short of that threshold, which is gonna be sit for nine minutes and then you get up before the pain comes back. And really the idea is that not only are we training our body, not only are we minimizing the opportunities to pick at that scab, but we're also ensuring that we are not reaching that threshold, which will make things increasingly sensitive. And you might notice that every time you have a flare up, everything gets painful again. You feel like you're going back to square one. And I want you to think every time you have a flare up, you're just picking a scab. And we wanna protect the scab, we wanna put a bandaid on, give it an opportunity to heal. And being able to reduce the fear. And the good news is that there are many different ways for, actually, for us to overcome pain. We can overcome pain through movement. We can overcome pain through behaviors. 
And then number three, we can overcome pain through nutrition, ensuring that we're putting good food in our bodies. Number four, we can do it by reducing the fear and understanding that the pain does not have control over you. You can control your pain by focusing on doing the things that you know that you love, doing the activities that you know reduce the pain, and also modifying or limiting those activities that actually increase your pain. Hope this was helpful.